Welcome to the Why Not 3 podcast, where you get the behind the scenes of achieving a work-life balance with peak performance. Hey there, and welcome to episode four of Why Not 3. I'm here today with Jasmine Wilness, and the best way to describe her is just describe yourself. I met her at actually a TEDx event where she spoke. She was very, very inspirational. Thank but you. <laughs> what is it actually that you do? Well, I'm the founder of uh, Jasmine Wellness, named after myself, of course. And I specialize in youth personal development, where I help um, the youth and especially my peers around uh, 20 years old students to really come in contact with themselves and really form their identity. And then next to that, I do, um, or I'm the founder of the University of Life, which is an online school in personal development for international students. And how did you even come to this University of Life concept? Because that's a pretty big thing. Um, Yeah, well, it all started um, right after I started my business, Jasmine Wellness, and I was really learning a lot about um, entrepreneurship. And I felt like I was not making as big as an impact as I wanted to. And I came up with the University of Life because I realized there were a lot of students who really wanted to work on their personal development, but they didn't really know where they wanted to start, and they didn't get all these tools from school. So I was like, well, what better way to give it to them than to give it to them through an online school and a platform where they can feel at home and they can get all these lessons from people of their own age. True. So we at Why Not 3 kind of focused really hard on the work-life balance yeah. aspect but then also getting peak productivity out of each area. If you take your university of life and everything that you've done so far, yeah. how would that concept fit into what you do right now? Well, the university of life is very much about personal development. And like work-life balance, it's about the balance in yourself. And personal development is very much the base to who you are. And it's like the balance in like work and life. And I believe that when you're con- consistently working on your personal development, but also very consciously working on your personal development, you can really uh, generate and kind of manifest the life you want and manifest the balance that you want as well. So I like that combination of the university of life, helping students to create their own balance and then implementing that in their work and in their life and creating even more balance between those two factors. Do you have like practical practical examples I, I try um, to give as much practical yeah. stuff as yeah. I can. Um, like examples of people that I've worked with well, or implementation something that yeah. the audience can take away right away well something that I've always done um, since or uh, something that I've always done for a few years and uh, really made me a lot more conscious is I've done a lot of writing and writing down about the things I'm feeling, the things I'm experiencing right now. Because a lot of times we experience all these emotions, but we just let it go until a few months later, even a few years later, these emotions come back. And it's so important to really be aware of what's happening right now and to learn from what's happening right now to grow from it instead of putting it off till later. Like, you know, when you have pain, you don't want to think about it at all until it, you know, keeps up exactly so writing has really been something that's helped me out and that I highly advise everyone to do it's really funny you say that because um, with the coaching clients I noticed that the moment they start writing we start finding out what their problem is almost like within weeks yeah Yeah. Um, where before I was tracking them for two months then I made them write everything down and suddenly it's because of that that like I had to rewrite my book in some ways just to add this last like kind of chapter where people can oh, do exercises and write stuff down yep. because I yep. noticed how much of an impact it creates. That's amazing. That's yeah. a really good one as well. Yeah, just letting it all out as well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And especially in those moments where, when you actually have to process it and not afterwards. when. Yep, <laughs> you got to no. do it now and not later. It works. Okay. Yeah. So we have a topic, actually. Um, yep. So it's work-life balance during exams, because we have some students in the audience as well. Yeah. It's uh, now December, so exams are coming up for a lot of them, or oh. some of them have exams. <laughs> yeah. So you've been a student. We've all yeah. been students. What, from your productivity and university of life, what do you advise, like if you have something practical to advise? 
what would you advise? Yeah, well, first of all, during ex exams is a really, really stressful period. And we all know that. And what really got through, what really got me through my exams was just preparation as well. Because you can head into something like it's like running a marathon. You can head yeah. into a marathon, but only run, you know, have only practiced to run 10K. You're going to be so tired at the end of it. And if you consistently practice, consistently practice, and you're consistently running outside, you know, eventually it's going to come nat more naturally. And what I mean by practicing or oh, preparation is, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> well, <but> practicing. <laughs> what, I, what I mean by uh, preparing for the exams is just knowing everything beforehand, but also finding out how you're going to balance everything. Like, the work-life balance because you can't just head into something just without really thinking about it or without looking at the whole picture as well like my sisters are now in their exams um, they're both in their exams and they have so much work on them and stuff like that and I'm really helping them you know um, be aware of the things that are happening right now but also it's such a different year than the years before and you can't just do the same that you yeah. did in the years before this right now it's just not going to work that way so you really have to adapt to the situation and really find that balance as well so in essence plan before you kind of jump into it yeah be which is very aware of what is going to come yeah. you can't like be, you can't plan for everything because it's just not going to work out that way yeah okay. of course you have to have a flexible plan. yeah you have to have a flexible plan but you have to adapt to the situation so, which includes enough sleep, but also finding the energy from yourself and not necessarily from the things around you, um, from different foods or stuff like that, and um, keeping yourself energized. So having a good plan that's adaptive. Yeah. That's, okay, that's a good way to summarize it. Mm -hmm. So you touched it like a little bit, but sleep. Um, I like to talk a lot about sleep. Yeah. It's part of biohacking, a lot of people don't take sleep as as it should be taken. No. Yeah. So I always say that sleep is the number one thing you shouldn't compromise on. Oh, absolutely. You can you can like eat healthier so you wouldn't need more sleep. Mm -hmm. But if you need sleep then you have to sleep. Yeah. It improves you, memory. You have to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what what's your take on that then? Well everyone has like a different um amount of time which fits them with sleep like for me it is eight hours I can't sleep any less and can't sleep any more because I either feel tired or I feel like my energy is low but um, the sleeping aspect is really important but it's also like how you go about it as well like I take the time before I go to sleep very seriously, like relaxing myself and stuff like that. Because you can sleep eight hours, but when you go to bed with so much stress on your mind and thinking about you waking up with this really horrible feeling and stuff like that, it's all in the mindset as well. Yeah. If you say, you know, okay, I might not have as much sleep like I did last night. <laughs> I might not have as much sleep as I normally do tonight, but I promise myself I'm going to feel incredible in the morning i'm gonna feel energized in the morning instead of oh my gosh i've got to study tomorrow and this and that if you go to bed with that mindset you're going to get up with that mindset True. so it's it's the sleep as aspect but also just the mindset around it as well yeah we have a device that i always refer to i'm not affiliated to it but it's called heart map okay and you you kind of attach it to your... I shared it on the 30-day challenge. So you attach it to your ear. Oh. And before you go to bed, it measures your heart rate variability. And it teaches you how to breathe so you can calm down before you That's go to bed. That's a really good one. So That's it helps really with uh, deep sleep. So if you track your sleep with a sleep tracker, you'll see that your deep sleep becomes better. Um, That's good. Yeah. And, and, and actually, we're kind of going to the next <clears throat> point, which is supplements. I also notice when you take magnesium, it calms you down yeah. for people that are magnesium deficient. Yeah. We, we talked about it last night when we were uh, Skyping, yeah. but you take magnesium, right? I don't take magnesium. <laughs> it's oh. not going to really sound like a supplement, but um, I drink a lot of water before I go to bed, like a lot, a lot, a lot of water, and right when I wake up, um, because I feel really like groggy if I don't and stuff like that. Yeah. 
but it's not really magnesium, but I do take um, vitamin C, I think it's some kind yeah. of, or vitamin D. I do take that just because it does give me the energy that I need. <laughs> is it vitamin C or vitamin D? I think it's vitamin, vitamin D is I think from the sun. Yeah, so vitamin I think D. I think it's vitamin C. It's like little drops that you can put into water. Because vitamin C stimulates uh, something called glutathione. Okay. And that helps your immune system. So it would be very logical yeah. that you take that. It's probably, it's probably vitamin C. But there is actually research and you can look it up probably. But um, if you take vitamin D, there's this guy who conducted the research in yeah. the army. And he took like a small dose of vitamin D and okay. gave it to the soldiers and they slept apparently better, which seems counterintuitive because vitamin D is yeah, from, from the sun, sun. and yeah. should energize you. Yeah. So it's funny how then research and experimenting works, but oh my you should gosh. look into that. Yeah. Well, I take vitamin C then. Yeah. <laughs> and um, which is, yeah, definitely very good for your immune system. And it just, it calms everything down, but it makes me, it makes me sleep pretty well oh as that's well. good and you know like everyone has different supplements but i would not advise like red bull or no because <laughs> a lot of times our studying happens during the night we want to stay up and study 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 and we have i've had that as well i've had like three bottles of red bull and been drinking it and i feel so so bad in the morning it's a I, lot yeah. of sugar. I remember during when I was still in law school, I remember I would buy um, cans of Red Bull. Yeah. But not even the real Red Bull, the fake no, one. Because like I was a student <laughs> yeah. at the time. And I was the cheap just, one. Yeah, I yeah. had like eight like fake Red Bull cans and just like drinking them after the other. I remember constantly, having constantly, constantly, constantly drinking it. Yeah. I remember after the exams just crashing completely. Yeah. And it was after that that I started discovering all this biohacking and how I can oh, great. use natural stuff to exactly. actually keep me going. Um, or wake up earlier or keep going longer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, don't do Red Bull, please. No, natural <laughs> products are so much more better because it's it's your body. It needs these natural products yeah. and they work so much better even if you do if you use like superfoods um like i love i start my morning with like a smoothie and i put um chia seeds in it as well and it just it just energizes a lot more than all the sugars and obviously red bull is a lot cheaper <laughs> and easier to get but, but the crash the, the crash, crash is, is so bad it's not it's the especially worst. exams because it takes a long while it's like a year yeah. or a few months. It's not worth it. But there's another supplement that I usually take during those periods. It's called ashwagandha. Okay. Not many people know it. No. It's like this Indian herb. Um, you can find it online. Um, ashwagandha, that's what it's called. Do they? I think I have a tea in Could that. Be. That sounds I think very similar. It, it's like you combine it with hot water usually or in a supplement oh, okay. form. Yeah. I'm not sure it's an actual tea. Yeah. But if you find it as a herb somewhere, it's it, it clears up your mind and gives you more energy oh, that as well. That's amazing. Yeah. That's good. But that that supplement, so there's like a ton more that we can discuss, but yeah. like but keep I, my it entire, natural guys. Yeah. Keep it natural. <laughs> my entire channel is filled with all these like uh, <laughs> tips. But yeah, keep it natural. Um you talked about like your evening routines. I think for many students, especially when it's exams. Yeah. Um, do you have evening or morning routines? I, I'm now actually really creating my morning routine because I feel that if I get energized in the morning, I will be energized for the rest of the day or as long as I can. And um, that's why I love like when I get up like this morning, I got up at like quarter to seven and um, I did my affirmation to you know I am powerful, I'm a leader, I can do this, I can take on the day and use your hands, use it, come on, put it in the air and stuff like that. And I felt so energized and motivated this morning. I was like, I can do it, yeah. I can do it. Because at the end of the day, I'm just gonna be like so much more calm. But for me, my evening routine um, is really about just taking it down 10 notches. Yeah. Because during the day you're like, oh, this and that and this and that. And especially during your exam, you're studying, you're studying, you're studying. And your evening routine or the evening is definitely the time to just relax, take it easy. Yeah. And that's something that I didn't do during my exams, but I would highly advise right now because your morning routine is really important, but your evening routine routine is 
just as important yeah. because your body needs to break it down from everything that you've done in the day. Because sleep is also yeah. a time to rest. But you know, you need to mentally prepare for that as well. You need to mentally just take it down yeah. five or ten notches. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, um, I was having a talk um, the other day about that. Mm -hmm. um, just how, so a lot of people in the productivity uh, area say that morning routine is everything. That's how you start your day. That's how you go and pretty much set yeah. your uh, mind to what you are going to exactly, accomplish. Exactly, exactly. But from the work-life balance perspective, if you want to maintain that for a very long time, the evening routine is the most important. Ah. So when I'm talking with my clients, yeah. I'm telling them evening no matter what, mm -hmm. and morning preferably. It's yeah. optional, but you can't skip evening. Just because if, yeah. you're, if your sleep is ruined, if you are going to bed and you're... You're going like, to be so yeah. groggy as well. Mm -hmm. And then you, after a while, like three months in, four months in, and I experimented with this, um, you just start, you just stop your morning routines. It just, yeah. that, I, I usually see people that start really well and then 30, 40 days later, suddenly it goes, down. yeah, it goes down. And it's because that evening routine wasn't as, as established as the morning routine. And I really like that because I was just, I was just thinking about that while you were saying that because, um, you can get up in the morning and get really motiva motivated and stuff like that, but if like you're going to bed at one o'clock or you're breaking down your body at like 12 o'clock and just like that just turning off the computer and stuff like that um it is definitely going to impact like how yeah. long you sleep it's going to impact how well your sleep is and stuff like that and your sleep is it's like the most like yeah you just said it, the sleep is the most important part of your day or it's like the most important thing for your body you can do a long time without food maybe not with water but sleep it's just your body definitely yeah. <laughs> needs it cool i'm super happy because you're yeah. uh, you spoke a lot about productivity personal development and i guess what i wanted to accomplish with this podcast is to show that like one does not exclude the other no work-life balance actually gives you more productivity absolutely and uh it's good it's good to get these mindsets and see where the similarities yeah. are yeah so thank you so much for You're very joining welcome. me yeah. um, it was really cool where can people find you yep you can find me um at www.jasminewellness.com and you can also find me on youtube i have a youtube channel where i talk about different personal development topics that uh, students have questions on yeah. and i also interview young inspirationals Lova is one of them <laughs> Um, where I tell their story and um, just a very inspiring things that uh, the Young Inspirationals yeah. have done and ready to inspire all of you out there to live your dreams. Great. I'll link everything down below, also in the outro. Thank you so much for joining You're me. You're very welcome. For uh, the people that listen on iTunes, um, you can find her on YouTube, you can find her on the website. I'll link everything in the descriptions. And other social media, it's exactly the yeah. same name. Thank you so much for joining us for episode four, and I'll see you for episode five. Bye!